Hey, Z31 family. I'm going to make a tutorial about rebuilding these rear brake calipers for our cars. As you know, there are none available to purchase. And when they finally do fail on you, you're going to have to rebuild them yourself. So I'm going to walk you through the rebuild process. Hopefully this is helpful. Here we go. If yours are like all of mine, they're probably leaking from right back here. That's where the e-brake cable connects to the caliper and there's a tiny little o-ring inside there that is no doubt popped and now all the brake fluid is just leaking out of this area that is not intended to have brake fluid so let's get into it these tools will be the most useful 14 millimeter little mallet in case we need to break some bolts and a big old channel lock let's tighten this up in the vise use the 14 mil wrench Crack this bolt. Got one more over here we're gonna need to crack loose. Set those aside. And this comes right off like that. What I like to do is go ahead and put these back in. And then set that aside. She's gonna go back in the vise here. We just take a little bit of silicone, spray it around this rubber boot, just around the seam there. Now, once you've t given it a few spins with that channel lock, it's gonna take a few probably. It'll just spin right off like this. You might have to pull that boot off of this inner lip right here. So here you go, you got these three pieces. Just give them a little bath, scrub off as much of that grass, get inside. All so now we gotta inspect this cylinder here and Look for scoring. I mean, this one looks to have a little bit of scoring in there. So what I would try to do, we can use the, um, use a little wire brush and just see if we can get that to come out if it's just rust. I've also got some 2,500 grit sandpaper. If you can get that to be nice and smooth in there, that's gonna be the goal, but if it's gouged or there's deep scoring inside here, it's not really a good candidate for rebuilding. Now, after a little further inspection, it's a shame. This one looks so good on the outside, but I just think this scoring is pretty deep. Um, it's starting to eat through the finish on the inside of the cylinder. So I don't think this one's gonna make it well, fortunately, I have a box full of extra calipers. Let me just dig in here and find a good candidate for the rebuild. All right, so now we're back at our workbench. Set things up. Nice little space for us to work. We should have some picks. That one's broken, but I still like it. This one's nice and sharp. Got a long, skinny one here. Wire brush and uh, some clip. Uh, pliers here. I also like to have a blank paper towel ready because as pieces come out of here and we disassemble our units, our calipers, we're going to want to line these pieces up in order. It'll look something like this. This is two calipers that are already removed. Okay, so first things first, this boot looks okay. I'm going to set it aside. We have a new one in the kit, but let's just make that the first item just in case. Um, so now we have to assess this piston. Um, it actually looks pretty good. We're looking at this surface here. This is the surface that makes contact with the inside of the caliper and uh, it needs to be tight, it needs to be smooth, it needs to be corrosion free. Um, this surface here, I think we can clean this up. That doesn't look too bad. And this is just coming in contact with your brake pad. So this is all good. I think this one is actually salvageable. So this one's gone. I mean, all that corrosion, um, that's unacceptable. That's gonna create ba a bad situation when you really need to stop. So yeah, this, this one's gonna be trash, unfortunately. Luckily, you can buy these Centric 1464013. That's the part number. I got this from Rock Auto. Um, 
It is a nice new piston, all wrapped up and sealed. So we'll put that one in when the time is right. First things first, disassembly. So we're gonna take apart uh, all the guts and I'll show you how that works. We're gonna get that retaining clip out of there. That's our first step. This one's not under any pressure, but some of them are. So just do what we gotta do to get this one out of there. Nice and easy. And this becomes our second little guy, right in order. There's gonna be a couple of washers and bearings in here. I'll show you the order. You get this little washer here. Got this bearing here. Uh, I believe the bumps need to stay up and the indentions are down. Another washer and this little bearing ring here. The groove side down, the smooth side up. And you just get some pliers and pop that out. An O-ring right there, that's gonna get replaced. And just pop it off, just like that. Uh, just for safe measure, I just keep everything in order so I know what order it came out. But we're gonna replace that when we open up the kit. So this is everything we have for the internals of the piston. Um, now we're gonna get everything out of the caliper itself. So this first one is spring-loaded and it's kind of tough. Um, I don't know that these will work. I don't have very good luck with them because the tip of the caliper gets in the way of me getting a good grip on stuff. So what I typically do is use a pick and I go in there and I pick it out of its slot. And this one came out pretty okay. It didn't come flying at me. They have come flying at me before. So here's the order, clip, cup, spring, and then washer. So now there's one more clip in there and that clip is not under any pressure or tension. So that one's gonna be a little bit more friendly. And this other one is still in its track. So I'm just kind of putting this sharp pry tool in there and trying to get it out of its track. There we go, see they're both out. So here's our next clip, goes over there. And you've got this thick plate with the indention down, that goes there. And then you pull this guy out, might take some pliers. There's this little pill in there too. This actually sits in there like that. So this little pill, you gotta get these two pieces out of there. But just a little wipe down for now. And this is the O-ring that has probably failed if your calipers are uh, leaking. This little O-ring is all the way in the back there, separating the area that gets brake fluid from the area that just gets grease and has uh, is cable activated. This is gonna get replaced by our kit also. And boy, just in time. Now we gotta get this uh, spring off of here. This whole mechanism needs to come off. This is why I like to keep this dull pick around because it'll fit right in there and push this spring down. So all I'm doing is if you see in there, the spring is kind of hooked in there like that. So I'm just gonna push it down and out with that pick. And then with this other pick, I'm just gonna kinda unhook it. That easy, comes right off. And here's my third stack of parts. To get this bracket off, it'll only come off in this part of the bracket. You have to get around this special area right here that's got an, a, a groove for that to come out. And it's the only way it'll come out is over that groove right there. Uh, I would just leave this exactly how it is. Clean it up the best you can, but don't disassemble this any further. Just set it aside. 
little rubber seal, that will also get replaced. But your kit doesn't come with new boots for this, so you need to salvage this. You need to salvage these little rubber boots, take good care of them. You know, don't just go ripping those off. If you can twist a little or use a pick to get inside there, whatever you gotta do to try to keep these, in, these boots in good shape because um, you don't get new ones, unfortunately. All right, this next part is super boring, but we're just gonna go one piece at a time. Grab whatever came out, drop it in our little wash bucket, scrub, 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 and pull it back out. Now we're gonna take some wire brushes and our calipers and go back to the parts washer. So we're just gonna hit these real hard with a big wire brush, try to get as much grime off. I just do the best I can with the parts washer. You could, I'm sure you could media blast these um, or send them out to like get powder coated at this point, you know, if, uh, if you want to really dress them up. But um, this is going to be my DIY uh, paint job on these. I just do two coats, one with the self etching primer, one with this engine enamel. Spray them and spin them and spray them and spin them. Now that we've got a couple of coats on there, Let's go rebuild the internals. Everything's back from paint now, and we're going to start rebuilding. So this is the Raybestos uh, Caliper Rebuild Kit, WK1541. Let's just kind of go along. A retainer clip here. We're not going to use that. This new boot. Here's the O-ring for the plunger that goes inside the piston. We got this O-ring for the plunger that goes inside the caliper. Of course, we've got the seal for the caliper and the boot for the caliper. The new piston. Um, so this is all the stuff that we're about to put into this. Anytime I'm doing any kind of uh, rebuilds with seals, I like to keep a little bit of motor oil just handy. So I'm going to just kind of lube up everything rubber that's going back in. Just a little bit of oil and then this will go back on here. So this guy just goes in here, push it down. I'm gonna need two hands to do this, but what I'm gonna do with the picks, I'm gonna push that back end in. I'm gonna squeeze these with the uh, clip pliers and just push it into the groove that uh, it came out of. I'm just gonna do the components that need some grease. So it's gonna be uh, these uh, pins that go in here and the brake, the e-brake needle bearings. What I've got is uh, just some heavy duty grease them up pretty good here just get a bunch on there and in they go and we'll set these guys aside for a little bit and we're just gonna kind of scrape some of this in here this window to be open there we go and then that seal is going to get locked into here. It will go flush all the way around. And then our e-brake cable bracket uh, is going to go in. It's going to go all the way down. So then we want to put our spring back on. It's got to rest against this pin. And then we've got to swing this piece back around inside here. A little oil on our O-ring. And then let's just put a little grease on this.
next is this plate and you'll see in there there's a, a little indention that's going to match up with the protrusion or little nub right there so and then this also needs to fit over this um, plunger a certain way you'll see the plunger's got sort of a rectangular shape I'm just going to line those up like so and make sure it's all seated got to put one of these in next so yeah that one uh, requires a bit of patience um, I dropped the back fat side in first and uh, kind of press it in with my uh, trusty blunt uh, pick to kind of seat just the corner, just a little bit of the back in there. And then these edges are going to be sticking up um, outside of the groove. And you know what I what you got to do is like kind of grab uh, one of these holes at a time and like pry it and push it down to get it to lock into place. Sometimes it helps to push that in as you go. Just throw a little washer on there. This is the fun part. This is gonna require the press. Um, I tried Jesse Elkin's suggestion with safety wire and uh, vice and it just didn't work for me. Um, he's got a good technique for that, but uh, for me, the only thing that uh, I could get to work is uh, this old girl over here. What we got going on here, we got the press. I've got just a piece of cardboard um, to help protect the new paint, but underneath big metal plates. So what I've got, I've got an extension, I've got a 14 millimeter socket, and the 14 mil just fits nicely over that cup that holds the spring in place. And I'm not going hard. I mean, all I really need to do is just compress that spring enough to where that cup slides down past the grooves and then I can put the clip in there. I pressed it down enough to where we're now starting to get the clearance we need. But as I do that, what I do is just spin, I just kind of spin this socket and extension around so you can see that all of the fingers are clearing the cylinder nothing's getting caught up they're seating where they need to seat and none of those are bent up over the rim there look at that and then once we clear the channel that the clip goes in uh, that's when the real fun starts drop that in and what I'm gonna do is the same as last time I'm gonna push it down in the back and then uh, try to grab one of these and uh, compress it in and push it down into its seat. Sort of a combination of picking and pushing. Let's take it out for a little inspection. Now take the rubber boot, put it over the piston. So now you're ready to put this back in the caliper. You just twist it in here with a couple of twists to get it started and the channel locks will finish the job. Put a new bleeder valve in, you don't want to reuse those. A little rubber cap, to keep things tight. And that is it. That's how I've been rebuilding these rear brakes on the Z31. And uh, I hope that this has been helpful for you all and can come in handy. Take care.